Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another timeless pick a card reading. Now today you can see I've got some objects on the different piles. We've got cherry blossom here, we've got this beautiful yellow wattle which is an Australian classic and we have this, I don't know what it is. So I'm so sorry, but it's a beautiful purple flower that comes from our garden. So if you'd like, you can choose on the basis of flowers or colors or numbers. You decide how you want to choose. And we've got what's left in the quote jar. And I'm pretty sure we've got enough to have two for each group. Maybe there's even three for one group. I'm not sure. Let's see. But yeah, that's what we've got this week guys so pick your group and I'll see you in your reading hi there group number one if you chose group number one or if you chose this beautiful cherry blossom flower let's take a look and see if we can oh isn't that pretty I love this flower that is so beautiful so if you chose this you chose something incredibly spectacular. I walked quite a distance to get this today and I probably shouldn't have been like, well, I mean, it was in a public place. <laughs> I don't think I stole it. I didn't steal it. Come on, it's nature. I just merely transported it to another place. Okay, let's take a look at your so yeah I didn't steal it from someone's garden don't worry it was like um on someone's nature strip so that's kind of public property right I think it's okay all right <laughs> let's take a look and see what cards you drew through now as with any of my readings please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't so we've got the ninth house here we've got the symbol for Sagittarius and the symbol for Jupiter it says here this is the house of higher and elevated thought as well as expansion. It covers long distance travels, foreign languages, inspiration, optimism, publications, higher education, spirituality, philosophy, religion, ideals, morals, and ethics. Okay, so we got quite a lot in that house, the house that we know and love, Sagittarius. Sagittarians are very much about seeking the truth the tarot you've got the hierophant upright you've got temperance upright beautiful okay let's see what else have we got here my scarf keeps falling there we go it's a little bit windy and cold out here today. We have this, I believe this is a fixed star. Am I right about that? And Tara's, if I'm not, I'll put it on the screen. It says here, great things follow to those who dare to descent to the depths of their existence. Wow. Okay. That is stunning. You've got this bright, beautiful, colorful card here, Kundalini. Lovely. And for hand-drawn, this is my own hand-drawn Vedic Astrology deck. One day I will get around to making a proper deck. I just need the time. I'll try and put that there. Venus in the first house. Oh, how beautiful. Venus in the first house and you chose this. Isn't that a great match? Yes. Oh, I love that. So we'll try and put that there so that you can see the flower. Okay, so what have we got going on here? This is a really, really nice spread. I really, I saw this briefly earlier and I was definitely impressed by the energies that you've got here, guys. Great spread. What I'm seeing and how I'm going to interpret and synthesize all of this together is one of the things actually which is quite simple is that I think you need a bit of time to look after your physical body 
that was one of the first things that popped up. And one of the reasons for that was because of Venus in the first house here. And we've got temperance upright as well. And this is definitely a card of healing. But in the context of this reading, I'm definitely reading this as a thing for your physical body that it would be good for you to rejuvenate. It feels like it doesn't necessarily feel like rest or doing nothing. It kind of feels a bit like you need to rejuvenate. You need to do things that make you feel good. Do things that nurture and nourish yourself. I think there's quite an indication here that you know through looking after the physical body you might be able to experience have an experience of your physical body to do with your physical body so kundalini awakening is when you've got this incredible energy that comes from the base chakra and it goes up like this and sometimes some people have an incredibly powerful kundalini awakening experience i know my yoga teacher in london she had an extraordinary situation where she thought something was wrong it was actually quite scary it can be a traumatic experience uh i i don't know what it is to have that i haven't had that but what i know and have heard is that when you have a, a kundalini awakening it is quite a physical thing and and I, do you know, I do think it can happen to people gradually and, and it can happen to people gradually, not in such an overt or obvious way, but in, in different ways in that you need to spend time in nature and that you need to change your job and that you need to, you need to change your life in some physical way. I do think that's partly what's coming through in this spread and need to make some physical changes in order for you to enjoy life in order for you to enjoy your body to enjoy being you know um so it's really interesting with this spread that these three cards really link in and then these three cards really link in so what did i see here well to me these three are a perfect match coming here together we've got the hierophant card now when I did a little bit of reading on this card, one of the things you'll notice is that his hand is upright like this. And that's actually quite similar to the magician. I believe the magician also has an upright hand. But in the Hierophant card, this upright hand is actually a divine blessing. So you're being given some kind of divine blessing at this time. I also got a real sense from these three cards that you need to deepen your knowledge about something. Maybe you need to study something. Uh, you need to go deep intellectually. This could be going deep into your own self, okay? Because we've got Venus here in this way. But it could also be learning something to do with your work, somewhere where you need to increase your knowledge on something. There can be that. The other thing I got as well is that you're being asked to follow a traditional path at the moment. So now is not a time for you to rebel. Now is actually a time for you to follow some kind of established path or something a bit more traditional. This is not a time for rebelling for you for now. It says here, great things follow to those who dare to descend to the depths of their existence. Yeah, and that doesn't that tie in here nicely with Sagittarius? In Sagittarius and in Vedic astrology, we have Mula Nakshatra here. And this really did remind me of Mula Nakshatra that it's, it's a good time for you to go deep. It's a good time for you to investigate something, to learn something. And it could be, yeah, learning something new about yourself, learning something new that's going to be good for your healing. Uh, and, and could be learning new things for your physical healing. You know, I've been lately I've been indulging and watching, um, gosh, what's that guy's name? Dr. Berg's channel. It's so good. There's like so much good stuff there. Okay. So he's, and he's teaching things about the physical body, you know, and how to um, just live well and be healthy. So for this group, I'm going to choose two of these let's see what we've got let's see what we pull through the last of the guidance quotes 
let's see what emerges I'm very excited I have no idea because I wrote these now probably three or four weeks ago Ooh, Carl Jung you are what you do not what you say you'll do Carl Jung yeah that's pretty incredible that does relate to I think that, that kind of relates to the discussion about the physical body because you know how we always say things like we always say oh yeah I'm gonna start that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna start that next week it's it's that kind of thing or, or I'm gonna do this but then we never do it like we're gonna I don't know incorporate some new yoga move into our fitness routine or something or whatever that is let's have a look at this last quote that we've got here oh my god you got Carl Jung twice that which we need the most will be found where we least want to look Ooh, shadow work okay yeah looking into the shadow you know and Carl Jung look at that that to me both of these are kind of fitting in with these three cards here in that there's something you're being asked to go about in a traditional way it's really interesting that we've got the kundalini awakening and this very high spiritual energy here and yet we've got this very traditional learning and Carl Jung this kind of professor of psychiatry well I mean he was was he was he a professor I'm not sure if he had a PhD but I mean he's certainly a founding father of the school of psychiatry and yeah it's kind of like I don't know you're being asked to do some study here about yourself I do think that which we need the most will be found where we least want to look it's very true yeah I think the thing is of um, don't be don't be afraid of any thought because it, it's all just thought energy who and what you are is beyond that and who and what you are is infinite and eternal and beautiful you know and look I mean we've got this gorgeous cherry blossom here I mean one thing that would be good to do is to google search what is the symbolism of the cherry blossom but I'm pretty sure it has to do with softness feminine energy you know a yin approach and I think if you are going to go deep as these cards are asking especially these two here and this one's saying great things follow to those who dare to descend to the depths of their existence look at that I mean this card fits in beautifully with these quotes here by Carl Jung go into the depths but do so in a very soft and gentle way in a feminine way in a yin way don't be hard on yourself okay Venus look after your physical body in the process yeah I mean it's um spiritual teachings it's it's I said to me it's kind of it's a it's a joy to read you know these kind of books and delve into our oneself it's it's I think because of because of Louise Hay because of her teachings I've really trained myself to go about it in a soft and a gentle and a feminine way so so yeah I think you're being asked to to keep keeping on to keep and I think you're being given a blessing a divine blessing I definitely think you're being given a divine blessing I also saw by the way this was something I forgot to mention if you're single and you would like to be married m marriage is in your future for sure okay this is a sign of that white rose guidance reads this card always whenever this one comes up she always says marriage you know for her this is the marriage card so if anyone is inquiring about that or wanting that know that that's in your future and while you're on your way to that dream life that you're creating you know continue your spiritual studies and continue definitely looking after your your physical health so guys that is what I've got here for group number one I hope this was a nice reading for you you can let me know in the comments below how this how this went and I look forward to seeing you next time hi there group number two if you chose group number two or if you chose this beautiful wattle let's take a closer look let's see if it'll focus in on that wow how beautiful 
Oh, I love this flower. It's so nice. And it does have a bit of a fragrance, not too much. But if you're standing up against a tree that is full of wattle, there is a kind of, it's, a kind, it's not a floral or fragrant smell. It's a kind of pollen green type smell. It's really nice. So if you chose this, <laughs> or if you chose by the color yellow or the number two, you are in the right place. Let's take a look at your cards. Let's see what you pulled through. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't. Okay, wow. So we've got vertex here. This, I believe, is a concept that they use in Western astrology. And it's kind of a, yeah, it's a turning point. Let's have a look. For tarot, you have got, okay, you've got the king of rods upright, a lot of yellow. Wow. Gosh, I didn't even think when I put that there. I just kind of, just kind of put them randomly. But yeah, there's some. Um, probably a reason why that happened okay the world upside down okay Hang on. I'll arrange those later ah kapha beautiful kapha as in vata pitta kapha in Ayurveda and then you've got this which We've got here this symbol for Scorpio, I do believe, poison and medicine. In order to heal, we first must shed our pain and fear. Okay. And then we've got a Mahapurusha Malavya Yog, Yoga, Yog. Venus in Taurus in the first house it says luxury artist and true value okay so let's take a look and see how I'm going to synthesize all of this together right so when I saw these briefly earlier I think for me one of your strongest cards is actually this vertex card right here and it's interesting that you got the color yellow. I didn't predetermine that, by the way. I just kind of put them on and I, I didn't think too much about that. But this is third chakra type stuff. And I think you are at a bit of a turning point in your life. You're at a, you're at a point where you are ready to, to completely drop something. Okay, so we've got here the world card in reverse. It's like you're at a turning point. It's like you're at this place where you're like, I don't want to do it that way anymore. Or I don't want to do that behavior anymore. Or maybe, maybe you're, you are taking back some power from the world that you had invested in the world previously. Like, for example, caring about what other people think. You, maybe you're drawing that power back. You're like, do you know what? I don't care <laughs> what other people think. Or this could be, yeah, like a a behavior or a pattern of yours that you just want to drop you just don't want to do it anymore and I think with this being upside down I think there are deeper realizations within you that your happiness is not in the outside world and that your happiness is actually going to be something that you find within and that you share with the outside world so that's art right we've got here the artist this is a classic artist type uh position here venus in taurus it's interesting we interesting group one we had venus in the first house and i was reading that to be more about luxuriating looking after the physical body but here we've clearly got artist okay so there's a slight difference because we're determining the uh ascendant sign there We've got the king of rods here. This is your creativity. This is your inner fire. And you want to do something about it. It's the king. It's not necessarily the queen. Okay, this is the king of rods. So you want to do something with this fire. You want to create something. You want to make something. You want to earth something. Look at that. We've got kapha. We've got earth energy. You want to make manifest your creative ideas, your art. You want to make it real. You want to birth it. You want to 
publish the book or the songs or you know yeah and I'm just kind of getting as well like social media digital type stuff maybe that's it maybe you know you want to be putting your stuff out there you want to be putting yourself out there in an earthy way but there is this this feeling this recognition I think of and it's this vertex it's this turning point of you know I used to be looking for my fun and pleasure in the outside world but I'm doing a massive turn now I know that my happiness is going to come from me tapping what's within me and sharing it and giving it to the outside world okay I think there's a real theme of that and earthing it through this kapha energy here because kapha of course represents earth in in Ayurveda we've got vata which is air we've got pitta which is fire and we've got kapha which is earth this also might be indicating we've got quite a loud bird there and I was just thinking that this this card also does remind me of um, someone that I used to work with he was a really big 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 guy really tall wide strong man and um we used to do a lot of work together uh, when I used to work in jobs and that. And, and he well, he was a Kapha person because he was a real earth, like he was built like a mountain. But he was a, so gentle and one of the most forgiving people that I've ever met. So either this is saying something about you, that you are incredibly forgiving and kind or that you're going to have some dealings with someone who's incredibly forgiving and kind i don't know this there could this could be a representation of a person in your life as well we've got this card here which is poison and medicine and when i was thinking about this i was thinking about all those artists who take the trauma and the difficulties in their life and they turn it into art and I'm really always struck by people who do that. In the tarot readings, I think in the past I have mentioned Michael Jackson. He definitely did that. Uh, if you watch my master series, you'll see that I, I did one on Peter Allen. And Peter Allen is a guy who, you know, I used, I used to listen to that song, Tenerfield Sadler, when I was a kid. It's such a beautiful song. I never knew it was about the fact that his father had committed suicide. I had no idea that that's actually what what the deep meaning what that, yeah that's what was going on in that song I had no idea but see this is the thing that I was thinking about today when I was reflecting on this earlier that when you transform some trauma and put it in your art you can make it this incredibly beautiful thing that people want to interact with your artwork will be something that people will seek out and want to interact with they will love it like that song, I used to listen to it because it was so sweet and nostalgic and sure it was a little bit sad but it was beautiful. You know, it was this really beautiful song. A bit melancholy but, but stunning. And when you alchemize trauma, it, it, it can be, it, and when you alchemize it into art, it can be just so beautiful. It can be this thing that people want to spend time with. Like a Venus in the in Taurus in the first house, I bet everybody wants to spend time with Venus in Taurus in the first house, you know. Um, but your artwork can be like that. Everyone wants to spend time with it. It's not, and sometimes I think people would be scared to share that stuff. They might think, oh, is it? Am I not complaining or blaming? Is it not that? No, it's not that. If you alchemize it, if you transform it, if you turn it into something that's art. You know, people just go, wow, that's really beautiful, you know. So I think there's some really fantastic energy here that's, that's asking you and that's encouraging you to birth something. And we've got this yellow third chakra color here. It's, it's going to take some strength. It's going to take some confidence. It's going to take, and there are always people who dislike what you do. There just are. There's always, always people who will say something, you know, even if you're making like, okay, Eckhart Tolle, my mom always gives me this example, she says, oh, you know, Eckhart, um, he, okay, so I'm going to give you guys three, oh, hold on, there we go, because there's, then there's two left for group three, um, yeah, Eckhart Tolle, okay, so what's the deal with him, he writes this beautiful book, The Power of Now, that you would think is just pure healing, and that people would love, but some buddy out there sent him a copy of his own book shredded like 
whoa you know i mean that's just insane so what i'm saying is i'm not saying that to frighten anyone that don't do your art because someone out there will hate it no but it's about accepting the fact that you know it's not it's not easy to be an artist and put your stuff out there so just be strong and kind and gentle like this soft wattle you know just don't worry about the small tiny percentage of people who don't like what you do because there will be a lot of people who really do like what you do okay so what does this say Bhagavad Gita it says detachment doesn't mean that you own nothing detachment means that nothing owns you yes I love this quote this is such a great quote absolutely and I think that's what you're figuring out about the world I think you're figuring out that you see, there's a there's a non-attachment to the world, or there's you're not being fooled by the world, or hooked into the world, or I think you're you're massively recognizing that what's of value is within, and the fun thing to do while we're here is to share what's within. You know, that's that's really what what is. And if you're not attached, you're free. You're then free to just give and be creative and enjoy. You know. Yeah, this is a great quote. Let's read that one more time. Detachment doesn't mean that you own nothing. Detachment means that nothing owns you. Yes. All right, so that's a great one. You've got two to go. Let's see what else you draw. And I don't want this to fly away, so I'm going to put that. I'm going to put the flower on it. There we go. What else do we have? Oh, I love doing this. It's fun to see what's in these. Okay. Oh, this relates to the world in reverse as well. The craving for experience is the beginning of illusion. Yeah, wanting a particular experience. You see the craving and the wanting, it does denote lack. So that's an interesting one. I was reading about that today. I was reading a book by Lester Levinson. And he was talking about you are everything. You are it. And I, it was really, really cool can't remember the exact words but yeah let's see what else we've got here because time is shuffling on oh okay wow oh i like this when i is replaced by we even illness becomes wellness yeah and that's that's a recognition i think this is tapping into that world in reverse as well that you are, and as I was just saying, you are it, you are everything. You know, what is, where is the lack? And, and lack and limitation, these things are illusion. And yeah, we are eternal, infinite beings at the end of the day. And that's always hard to, well, sometimes it's hard to remember that, you know. Wow. Well, guys, that is your reading for today. I hope it's been a good reading. Let me know in the comments below how you got on with that. I would love to hear how this was for you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, or if you chose by this beautiful purple flower, and I apologize, the flower appears to have wilted a little bit. Oh, isn't that pretty? It's just, I think it's a very sensitive flower because I only took this from the tree two readings ago. So, well, that's okay. So we can still appreciate this lovely flower. I'll put it in some water. I'll take it upstairs and it should be okay. All right, let's get into the reading. So, and if I find the name of the flower, I'll put it on the screen as well. So what cards did you draw through? Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. Uh, we've got here Libra. And that's the sign for Libra. And we've got Venus there. Okay, beautiful. Now for Tarot, you've got the Queen of Rods, upright, beautiful. And we've got the Two of Swords in the reverse position. Okay, interesting. Just remembering what your cards were, group three. I saw them briefly earlier. 
Aha, uh -huh, yes, you've got Tantra. Beautiful. Whoops. Okay, and you've got this Exola, and it says birthing and safeguard. Sacred is the divinity contained in your skin. The blood running through your veins is simply a miracle. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah, the joy of being alive. We all have access to that while we're here. Okay, so we've got sun in the third house. All right. I remember you group three. This is a lovely spread. And I think spiritually you're growing enormously. There's this wonderful card, Tantra. And when I read, I read the guidebook on this one because I just wanted a refresher to see how they are using this word. And yeah, one of the things here is that you've drawn this card because you're getting very good at unifying opposing energies. So masculine and feminine energy. Also, in the guidebook, it wrote something about cognition and intuition. Okay, so thinking, but suspending thinking and, you know, using your different senses. So you're getting really good at unifying what would otherwise be dual, okay, dual energies. So you're getting really good at uniting these dual energies. And the more you do that, the more you everything becomes one so they're dual up here but it becomes one kind of you can picture like one thread or something and there's this thing of you moving into infinity okay so that's the sun energy saturn is the opposite saturn is limitation saturn you know thought air thought division, separation, limitation. So you're getting really good at where there's duality, making it this, this, this oneness and it, you're moving towards infinity. And it's amazing that you had the sun pop up because I do believe, and I'm yet to finalize my thoughts on this, but I do think there's something in common there, the sun and infinity, there's something there. Okay, so it's, it's that infinite being that you are. I think you are turned towards that and you are going in that direction. You're doing great. Okay, how many people are doing that on this earth? Not so many. We're more and more. It's happening more and more and more. And that bird is just confirming it, right? So thank you, bird. What is that? Is that a... Well, I don't know if that's a cockatoo. I'm trying to see can't see it but that bird is confirming that more and more people are waking up definitely and you are like massively on that path okay so you're doing amazing but I remember your group in within uh, there's some situation that you're going through where you are being asked to choose and when this is upright I mean look at her that is a tough choice she's blindfolded and she's got these two swords like how do you choose when you're in this situation? But when it's in its reverse, I feel like you're resisting making a choice. So otherwise it's a difficult choice when it's upright. When it's in its reverse, you're resisting making the choice. And I feel like you're resisting something and I think it's going to be tough, whatever it is, this is kind of a Gandanta type situation. We've got Scorpio and Sag, and when the you when these two blend, there's a Gandanta that happens. The water bubbles like crazy, and it's this you know um, it, it can be a really difficult process. So I can understand maybe you're going through some choice where it's like you, you don't feel like you want to choose either way. You're finding it very difficult. What I can tell you is, I believe, no matter what choice you make, you are going to emerge victorious. 
and you are going to emerge as a leader okay that I can see and yeah I and I've thought about different times in my life where you know gosh yeah it was difficult to choose and Caroline Mace one time she really helped me a lot with that she said she said the thing about it doesn't matter which path you choose because whichever path and it, it, it can be this thing in life that whichever path you do choose there's going to be good and bad so it, I think you might be in a little bit of a difficult spot here but but I think your your spiritual development and how far you are on that process I think you're very advanced enormously so spiritually and you are coming to that infinity you know that place of yeah being your infinite self so I think I think you've got this whatever this is I think you're going to emerge a leader and I think you also know that as well Libra this card here I mean this to me was just indicating and it could be it could be a seventh house thing it could be something to do with your relationship it could be a social thing could be some social thing that you're going through or something to do with a relationship let's take a look and see what we've got left here there are two left I drew three for group two and you've got the last two so let's see what they are maybe these quotes are going to shed a little bit more light on what's going on and I mean look at that this flower wilted I was not expecting that guys so there's a little bit of symbolism there I think maybe this might be something there's something draining you there's something it's this it's these two cards basically it's something to do with a difficult choice that you're resisting and there's this gandanta this place of oh god like you know <laughs> what do I choose and am I going to survive this and yeah it's, I don't know there's something but you've got this sun in the third which uh, that is confidence as well and there's this infinity there's you and infinity there's there's definitely let's see if we what we got here going on come on this is going to give us some more info oh wow how amazing oh no poison was in the last group okay i just saw the word poison and i thought oh my god but no the poison this card the point that was in the, the previous group doesn't matter let's see what this is anything beyond what we need is poison it can be power, laziness, food, ego, ambition, vanity, fear, anger, or whatever. Wow. Anything beyond what we need is poison. Yeah. It can be power, laziness, food, ego, ambition, vanity, fear. See, I think this is something I think you know as well. So to me this doesn't feel like it's helping with the issue but it might it might be striking one of you guys tell me in the comments below how that quote works out for this group let's see what this is let's see what's in here okay so I'm gonna put this on there or I'm gonna do this so it doesn't fly away if you have been brutally broken but still have the courage to be gentle to others then you deserve a love deeper than the ocean itself. How beautiful. Nikita Gill. Yeah. And I think, look at that, the word courage. You deserve a love deeper than the ocean itself. Absolutely. I think we've got the courage here in this card with the sun in the third. That's a great spot for the sun, by the way. Great, great via transit and it's a good strong place for the sun. And this, Venus, you deserve a love deeper than the ocean itself. You do. And we've got this Queen of Wands. Honestly, I believe you're going to, you're going to have that. You're going to have that love deeper than the ocean itself. And we do have this gorgeous Tantra card here as well. And if you explore the realm of Tantra, there's so much healing and there are professionals and experts who can provide you know um, deeper guidance and help 
and that can be if you're dealing with something on your own or it can be something if you're dealing with a partner for example but honestly I this situation that you are in and I know I, I think that it, it could be there's some difficulty here but I feel like I've just got such a strong feeling that you're going to come out victorious you're going to come out better than fine you're going to come out better than you ever were and I think it's I think yeah it, it's an interesting one because on the one hand I feel like you see anything beyond what we need is poison and I think you know that I think you know that you don't need anything extra you're equipped you've got the courage you've got the loving heart you've just got to deal with this situation and you're going to come out a leader I, I do see that and if you're tired if you're feeling a little bit wilted like this sweet flower here take a bit of time out you know rebuild your strength get your strength back to where where it can be sometimes that takes time sometimes it doesn't it just depends but guys wherever you are I'm sending you lots of love group three I'm sure you're gonna be fine and let me know in the comments below how you got on with this reading I'm always interested to know oh we've got some birds join us okay hi birds I can see some parakeets some green green and rainbow colored they're really pretty I would show you but the garden is not in great shape <laughs> all right well thank you so much group number three and I look forward to seeing you next time Thank you.